I'm delighted that you're joining us today for our worship service as we continue our journey through this unusual time throughout our nation. And since you are joining us, let me remind you that wherever two or three are gathered, and I consider us gathered simply by being together uh, online in this format, but where two or three are gathered, Christ has promised to be in their midst. And so by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united in worship today. Thank you for being a part of our worship service. Oh, I have three uh, special announcements to uh, pass on to you. The first is, as our church continues to operate, uh, we are now in the process of seeking our elders, that is our, our ruling body, for the next three years. If you have someone you would like for our nominating committee to consider, please email Elizabeth Burgess or Tawanda Brown in the church office and pass on that name and they will get that name to our nominating committee. The second element is, as our church does continue to live and in its own way thrive in this strange setting, today we celebrate, this evening at our worship service at 7, we celebrate the topping ceremony for our new gymnasium. And you are cordially invited to come out for that service this evening at 7 p.m. That way you'll get a chance to see the construction that is ongoing as well as to worship and celebrate our common life together as we have pitched in together to make this wonderful thing happen. And lastly, to lead you into this service, we have two uh, benevolent opportunities this Sunday afternoon from 4 until 7 p.m. so you can drive in and stay for the service thereafter. And that is a drop-off for Room in the Inn. Uh, those of you that are unaware of Room in the Inn, it is when we host in the wintertime our homeless community here in the Charlotte area. So what we need for drop-off for that are the little toiletry uh, bottles that we often pick up on vacations. There'll be a drop-off spot from that when you drive in to our church parking lot sometime around 4 p.m. or later. And also we have another food drive where we are again emphasizing protein, and that is for our loaves and fishes project. Last time we did that, we got three quarters of a ton of food to take to loaves and fishes. I hope that we can meet or exceed that goal this time as well. Again, it will be a, a drop by and drive through, or if you'd like to time it nearer to the 7 p.m., uh, drop it off and then come and join us for our topping ceremony, celebrating our work, your work, as we continue in this community to find a variety of ways to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, our call to worship. Today from Romans, the 14th chapter, the 7th verse and the, through the 9th verse. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living.
now let us unite our hearts and our minds in prayer. Let us pray. God, our source and our salvation, in love you made us, and by love you have redeemed us. Make your love for us bear fruit in our forgiveness of others, that in this life we may know your all-embracing compassion, and in the world to come, receive the everlasting joy of fellowship you share with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Loving God, as we continue in these days of COVID-19, we pray for those who are sick or troubled in mind, body, or spirit. Bring your healing, relieve their distress, and return to them the joy of your salvation. Bless the vaccine development process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer the violence of war or natural disaster, especially those fighting wildfires in California and neighboring states, places of racial injustice and unrest, and for tensions in Belarus and along the India-China border. Bring an end to violence that destroys human flourishing. Help us to live in peace with our neighbor and enable us to dwell in harmony with the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children and for all who depend upon the support of others. Protect the vulnerable, shelter the weak, and give wisdom and strength to those who care for them. Bless those who are engaged in online learning, especially those who struggle with family needs and access to technology. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for elected officials and for civil servants. Stir up in them a desire for justice. Enable them to fulfill their responsibilities with integrity, looking out for the common good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church. Let us live as new and holy people, delivered from sin and death by the grace of Christ through the waters of our baptism. Bless all who lead your church. Grant them wisdom to know your truth and give them courage to live as faithful disciples of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have crowned us with steadfast love and mercy. Receive our prayers and help us to trust your goodness. Through Jesus Christ we pray as he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God wants, no, expects us to forgive others from the heart and really mean it. In this week's Bible story from the book of Matthew, Peter was talking to Jesus and asked Jesus how many times a person should forgive another person who says or does hurtful things. Peter asked if he had to forgive us as many as seven times. Jesus told Peter, not, not only does God want us to forgive someone seven times, God expects us to forgive that person 70 times, seven times. Wow! Not seven times seven, but 70 times seven? That's a lot. This doesn't mean you need to keep count. It means we are always expected to forgive others. God just wants us to love others, have compassion, and forgive. It's not always easy. Sometimes it is very hard. So the next time a classmate, teammate, brother, or sister is mean to you or says hurtful things, remember God wants us to forgive them, not stay mad at them. By doing so, you will make God happy and yourself happy too. Just as importantly, when we are the ones who have been mean or said hurtful things, we should always ask others to forgive us. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping me to forgive others and thank you for forgiving me when I say or do hurtful things. Help me to show your love always. Amen.
Today's scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, which is clearly a congregation that is right mixed. It's always good to understand that ordinarily Paul is responding either to questions that have been asked him or to letters that have been sent to him. And today he is dealing with a division in the church. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, Abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that He might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's join together in prayer. Oh God, as human beings, our situations in life have changed with our cultures, and yet we are very much the same as we were from the beginning of our creation. In these moments together, open your timeless word and make it for us. Timely. In Christ's name, amen. In a previous congregation that I served, one day the secretary buzzed me and said, It's uh, Mr. Boston from Huntsville, Alabama. He, he says it's a personal call. And I told her to put him through, and so she did. But my antenna were up, thinking it's probably a salesperson. If he thinks he can get to me this way, he's wrong. Hello, I said cautiously. Rob Bloomer, the voice said, you probably don't remember me. I'm Edward Boston from, and a light flashed. 
I didn't need him to finish his introduction of himself. I wanted him to know before he could remind me that I did not need reminding. Of course I remember you, I said, interrupting where he was going with his introduction. I used to sit with you in church when I was three years old until my family moved when I was six. When you prayed, you'd bow your head and pinch the bridge of your nose between your index finger and your thumb. You came to my birthday party when I turned six. It was a pirate party. You gave me a chemistry set for that Christmas when I was in first grade, and one winter you took me sledding. Now these two words don't go together, but they fit the condition that Edward Boston found himself in pleasantly shocked. When I was a small boy, Edward was in his last year of high school. Maybe he was just a junior. That I cannot remember. My dad was pastor of a church. Mother sang in the choir. And I could already sit quietly for an hour, so I preferred church to nursery. And I sat with Edward Boston every Sunday morning, about the third row back on the right at First Presbyterian Church of Newton, North Carolina. Sure, I remembered him. You bet I remembered him. How could I forget him? Edward played football in high school, and sometimes our, families, our family went to the games, but I did not remember those games or him from that. And he played basketball, and sometimes our family went to the basketball games, but I did not remember Edward from that. I only remembered Edward from church. I learned lessons from him. He, he showed me that even big boys prayed and that even big boys opened their mouths to sing hymns and that big boys thought it was fine to do in church this thing of looking after little boys as though they were their own little brothers. I would say that those simple lessons I learned from sitting next to Edward, coupled with Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, are a set of life lessons that can catapult a toddler a long way in life. Rob Bloomer, you probably don't remember me. I'm Edward Boston, and remember, <laughs> remember, how could I forget? He would lift me up to the new water fountain in the new Sunday school wing for a drink every Sunday before we went in to worship. He would not let me make a paper airplane out of the bulletin until the last amen, and then he'd help me, showing me some pretty neat, airplanes. Edward Boston had no idea the influence that he had on me. In fact, I doubt that I knew Edward's influence on me until he called me up more than three decades, it might have been four decades, after I had last seen him so that he could find out about our family and I blurted out an earful to him about what I had picked up about the seriousness of the faith, about the fun of the faith, the joy of my big family in the faith just by sitting with him. Now, I don't think the Apostle Paul had older teens or college boys and toddlers in mind when he separates the Christian community into strong Christians and weak Christians. He tells us what it's all about as he's writing his letter to that church in Rome. Weak Christians believe it to be an absolute necessity to adhere to all the dietary laws of their Jewish heritage. Strong Christians know they can ignore those laws. And it seems that these same laws also abided by, or were abided by, by, by weak Christians and strong Christians in terms of which day of the week to hold sacred for worship. 
And Paul refuses to take a side. Knowing his character, I have no doubt that he had his own preferences about food and also about which day of the week was the one to hold sacred. But Paul is about a larger, grander point, and it's this. He says it in the text. Let those who eat or abstain from certain foods and let those who set aside this day or that day for worship do so in honor of the Lord. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died. In other words, the power of Christ's death for us overwhelms the things that cause us to bicker, that can cause us to imagine that we are superior over other brothers and sisters in the faith. So that in the end of this reading today, Paul concludes, why would you pass judgment or despise your Christian brother or sister? It's clear to me that we all have much we can share and much we can learn from each other. Whether we are those that Paul would call strong or those that Paul would label weak. For the death of Christ through the love of God the Father has put us all on the same side of the equation, the strong and the weak, the toddler and the college boy. Now said another way, consciously or not, as Christians, the weak and the strong nurture each other. I suppose you could call any three-year-old weak in the faith. Besides being able to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, and I'm not sure how well I could sing it at three, I would not have thought that I could do anything to nurture Edward. I suppose based on Edward's faith practice and his Sunday morning watch care for a toddler that Edward was a strong Christian. My spouting out recollections for decades old certainly proved what I, the weak, had received from Edward, the strong. And maybe, just maybe, my recollections over 40 years later demonstrated to Edward that sharing Worship time with a toddler, even back then, that toddler had nurtured him. Let's join together in prayer. Oh God, keep us ever rejoicing that whether we are wise or not so wise, deep in the faith or not so deep. You have called us as your family to support and, yes, to nurture one another by the power of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Holden Parker, a senior at Appalachian State University and an alum of the youth basketball program at Sharon Presbyterian Church. Today we will be celebrating the topping off of our new gymnasium. Wow, what long way we have come since the first year Chris Price spearheaded the formation of our first team. I was lucky enough to be on that team and I have many fond memories of games and practices in the Charles Little Activity Building. As the new gymnasium rises up from the ground, I can't help but think of the tremendous possibilities and hope for the future. 
For me, youth basketball was an opportunity to engage in fun exercise, teamwork, and Christian fellowship with my teammates and others through the Charlotte community. As we celebrate this building milestone today, I can only imagine with joy the new connections and fellowship that will take place here with future generations of basketball players. Thank you all for helping Sharon Presbyterian Church grow and its service to Christ for many years to come. With joy and gratitude, let us give to God our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for these gifts. Multiply them and enable the work of love and the righteousness of your kingdom in the world. We thank and praise you. Amen. Life in the Christian community is a give and a receive. Remember this. In the presence of your brothers and sisters in Christ, you are sharing your faith. Also, look forward to those opportunities to where you are receiving their gift of faith that nurtures you as well. And know this, every day, the grace, the mercy, and the peace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you strengthening you and your witness for Christ's sake always. Amen.